So what do we got? We got to put up the forms and then we backfill and then we fill with concrete. The footprint's going to be relatively small. These guys are such badasses. About three hours or four hours ago, this didn't exist. Yeah. This is going to be out here, a big porch area. Yeah, right at that angle on the left and continuing to this corner right here. Right. That's the porch. The distillery is going to start right here. Half the building is going to be divided. And on the back half, this is where all the production is going to be. Yeah, this is, it's not that large. It's the hobbits of distilleries. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like if the hobbits designed a distillery, this we, would be it. We need a round door. <laughs> <laughs> First episode on this channel, October 4th, 2017. Wow, 17. Do you remember what it was? Was it cutting down the tree? It was right here. Okay. In this exact spot. Wow. I think we're gonna need this. Oh, okay. This episode is probably gonna be one of the biggest, most consequential series of announcements we've ever had, ever. Okay. In every direction. You ready? I guess. I don't know what this is. May you drink with us! <laughs> You've been with Whiskey Tribe and Crowded Barrel from the beginning, mm -hmm. but what most people don't necessarily know, this has never been your main gig. No, it's my side gig. Uh, over the years, this became my main gig. Mm -hmm. This is like, I'm all in, Whiskey Tribe, Crowded Barrel. Everybody else that's on the staff, like this is their job, their career, their livelihood. But you have always been primarily at our neighboring property, mm -hmm. the Wizard Academy. Yeah. What is Wizard Academy? Why does it exist? Wizard Academy is a business school for entrepreneurs. Yeah. That's the shortest version. We do classes around 40 a year where we pick a topic important to entrepreneurs like business communications or marketing or leadership or development. We spend two to three days on campus. We teach them those things. Then they go home and make more money. So for those that don't know, my family founded Wizard Academy several years ago. They bought raw land. They donated half of it to a school that mm -hmm. my father wanted to establish, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And for the longest time, they were looking for a vice chancellor. Yeah, for like five years. Yeah. I met Daniel and I saw there was a good fit. I was like, you know what? I think this guy could probably do the job. That was a very weird day. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was a long day Yeah, and very weird. We went to Starbucks, yeah. which I never do. Yeah, and then we came back like, here. Like, so basically this entire adventure was fueled by pumpkin spice lattes. Yeah, don't, that's, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so sorry, that's the worst origin story. Yeah. <laughs> that's so rock and roll. <laughs> So my family has since retired from Wizard Academy mm -hmm. and you've been running the show as the chancellor. So it's a really cool spot, but that has always been your, basically your main gig. Yeah, that, that was sort of my North Star. And then the whiskey school was built in that. Yeah, Daniel, he, you know, rightly so, wanted to put some fingerprints mm -hmm. on the school and as well, what's something that you're passionate about that yeah. you think that you can educate people on very well? And it was whiskey. It was whiskey. You know, I had my own studio going on, my own clients. Mm -hmm. He came to me and said, well, how do I make people know this program even exists? Yeah. What was the answer? Like, well, yeah. why don't you do a YouTube channel and talk about whiskey in the way that you want people to talk about whiskey? Yeah, the thought process was if there's somebody that's nerdy enough about whiskey to watch somebody drink and review a whiskey on yeah. YouTube, yes. they're likely a good candidate. Probably target market. Yeah, yeah. likely a good candidate for a whiskey <laughs> psalm class. Yeah. So, you know, we set up, uh, you know, the cameras. Yeah. You, you did several episodes. And then I realized, like, well, if this is going to be the main push for building awareness that this yeah. exists. I can justify getting more deeply involved right. as a case study for my own video clients. Well, and also, like if you're around Rex for more than 10 minutes shooting, you'll hear, show, don't tell. Yeah. Instead of just talking about a still, show a still. Instead yeah. of talking about fermentations, show a fermentation. And so... So instead of a whiskey psalm talking about whiskey abstractly, you would have a psalm mm -hmm. take somebody who is curious about whiskey, interested in whiskey. So we established this dynamic where there was the psalm and you know what, I'll be the mooch. We'll mm -hmm. play off of that. Yeah. I'm there to just keep getting free pours and ask questions. Yeah. And then you show how to present whiskey knowledge. Yes in a non-pretentious way. Which you know, I almost achieved. <laughs> <laughs> that dynamic would work out amazingly well. Yeah. I think within less than a year and a half, um, the Whiskey Vault, that very first right. whiskey review channel owned by Wizard Academy, that was the largest whiskey channel on YouTube. Yeah, and it crossed six figures and got a button and yeah. we were off to the races. And yeah, and then we realized, it's like, well, this was a case study for me. 
But I'm having way more fun doing this. This is a non-profit school. Yeah, and there are like, hard and fast rules, which by the way, money was not funneling to you. Yeah. There was no money yeah. at all. <laughs> no, there's not. There was, <laughs> I have my clients, but I also like this, you know, this whiskey vault. The editing yeah. is fun, I'll do this for free. It grew to the point where if we're going to be able to take advantage of any of this momentum, this is a non-profit. Yeah. Like we, we can't personally, financially benefit from this yeah. channel that we built. We can't. This community that we attracted. So if we ever want to do anything outside, we got to start a new channel. Yeah. Like if we're going to start a new channel, I didn't want it to be a carbon copy. Yeah, and when we first started it, there wasn't a chat. It was still just you. And then with that momentum, again, yep. very quickly, we realized we could probably do a distillery. Yeah. Collectively, yeah. with the Whiskey Tribe, with the Magnificent Bastards, if we want to put together like a crowdsourced distillery, collective input distillery. So that became Whiskey Tribe. Mm -hmm. That became Crowded Barrel, the world's first crowdsourced whiskey distillery. Over the years, I phased out my past career. Everybody else on the team is all in. This is their, their livelihood. This right. is their career. But you... have still been... <laughs> you have always been at Wizard Academy as your yeah. main gig. Yeah. And eventually we realized what we need at Crowded Barrel yeah. is beyond what you're able to give. Yes. I am stepping out of Crowded Barrel and Whiskey Tribe and refocusing all of my energies into Wizard Academy as Chancellor and Whiskey Marketing School. Yeah. You are no longer working here as somebody that is on the team. No, I'm just another super sexy guest. Well. Just. Well. It's just. I can still come here and drink whiskey just to put out the vibes. Well. Because it will attract more people here. Just the vibes. So, you're obviously drunk. <laughs> Officially, Daniel is no longer in Crowded Barrel or in Whiskey Tribe. Practically, you and I, we know, like... Been living over there. Yeah, 90% of Daniel's time has been over on the Wizard Academy side of things. Right. Behind the scenes. You've been gone a while. Yeah, I've not been doing any active like distilling yeah. or yeah, just checking in on things and it was supporting. A, a little over a year ago where you and I had a conversation where it was like, hey, this stuff needs to happen. You're at Wizard Academy. Mm -hmm. I can step in and absorb these responsibilities, but am I keeping your seat warm? Right. Is this something where you're phasing out indefinitely? Right. Originally there was this plan to where you're gonna be around at least as long as your youngest right up until he graduates high school and then who knows where you go but that was going to be you know several years from now right like five years yeah but now we're a year into this arrangement yeah. and no yeah it's getting harder rather than you know try and keep daniel's seat warm mm. i realized keeping other people from your spot at the table is holding back progress. Yeah. There's things that we're not doing that we're not getting done because, well, that's Daniel's role. That's Daniel's responsibility. That's yeah. Daniel's job. But you aren't all in here. No. We came to the conclusion that it's just easier to officially phase you out mm -hmm. so that you are all in at Wizard Academy again. And over the last uh, you know, several months, I've been plugging other people into the roles yeah. that have needed to have you know, full-time attention um, and we've been making tremendous progress. Brandon Day is just kicking ass, amazing operations manager. So we're doing fantastic things. We're increasing revenue like in the last nine months mm -hmm. by 54%. Yeah, that makes sense. But in the back of my head, it's like, damn, this entire channel, the community, the premise of everything that we built mm -hmm. has been built on this idea of two buddies making an app and like how many whiskey nerds thing. how many whiskey nerds have like sat down it's like it would be really cool we should start our own distillery yeah <laughs> right yeah, probably a lot actually. and <laughs> and for us to you know do that and take people along for the ride so that the audience can vicariously live that experience well that's no longer the experience right so go ahead <laughs> What am I going ahead on? I, I don't know. I just feel like I've been doing, <laughs> I've been doing all the talking. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm, I'm talking for you. Like you, you can say words. It's fine. What? So how has your experience been? Absolutely incredible. Uh, I mean, places I've never imagined my life would go is where I've landed, and that's mostly due to you guys. So thank you. Unfortunately, you're stuck with me. <laughs> you phasing out. On paper, I get it. Yeah. 
Um, in practice... Tough math. Yeah. So I sat down and I thought about it. It's like, okay, well, I think I can do this. You know, Daniel's going to be exiting. I have you know, half a dozen people that are exceptional talents that I can bring in mm -hmm. and fill in those gaps on a regular basis. Yeah. And as long as our, you know, our people that are just the most diehard and they watch both channels and everything that we do, like, we'll still be there yeah, having that, that duo on Whiskey Vault. Well, except for the government. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the other thing. Uh. So it was about, it was, felt like about two weeks ago, two or, th two or three weeks ago, mm -hmm. when Daniel and I were figuring out, well, the shape of his departure from Crowded Barrel mm -hmm. and Whiskey Tribe. And then it's like, by the way, Rex, would you consider leaving Whiskey Vault? Mm -hmm. And as he said these words, I couldn't think of a more short-sighted, idiotic, just <laughs> stupid thing to consider. <laughs> than me leaving the Whiskey Vault because, well, that's where we can still do the Rex and Daniel thing. Yeah. And at this moment in time, like, there's not a worse moment in the history of our community, our channel, of anything for you to suggest to me that I leave that channel. Because what does that do if you're leaving Crowded Barrel and Whiskey Tribe and I'm leaving Whiskey Vault all at the same time? Oh, Mommy and Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> That is just the, a recipe, the perfect recipe for splitting a community in half. Yeah. Yeah. Really stupid. But here's the thing. He, he, he suggested something to me. He's like, look, if we're ripping off the Band-Aid, mm -hmm. one of the unguarded flanks of the Academy, it didn't start this way. No, it didn't. But it became what? It became the IRS. Yeah. A non -pro Look, and we've been so careful. Yeah. But the moment that the only connection is an owner of a distillery right. being the only official representation on this channel of any distillery in Texas, yeah. that's an argument that just got real hard to defend. For, for a nonprofit, they're not able to explicitly promote, they're not able mm -hmm. to do, um, was it collabs and profit sharing? And at this point, I am so completely and thoroughly in, yeah, very much associated with this specific distillery, and to the extent that I am there on the nonprofit Whiskey Vault channel, right. doing these reviews alongside you, right. It can be argued that it's an implicit yeah. endorsement and promotion of Crowded Barrel. This is how dangerous that is. In the early days of Wizard Academy, and they were trying to get the nonprofit status. Yeah, they were meeting at Tuscan Hall over here. Yeah, and the agent said, well. Do you hold classes over there? And Roy was like, yeah. And she was like, so what do they do after they're done? He says, well, they clean up and they leave it the way they found it. And they're not charged. And they're not charged for using it at all. They just clean it up and leave it the way they found it. And yeah. she said, oh, so you're trying to start an educational nonprofit so you can get free janitorial services. No joke. That's that's literally the conversation that happened. Yeah. That's how hardcore they are. These shares of Credit Barrel. I bought you out. Mm -hmm. It does threaten the mm -hmm. viability of the Wizard Academy, yeah. the Psalm School, which is a really weird thing to consider. It's super depressing. It's like it started <laughs> with just you and me. Yeah, like, like, it's, well, it's no big deal. You got no benefit for years. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to be on the Whiskey Vault channel anymore. Uh, I'm still going to be, you know, very much involved on the Academy mm -hmm. side of things. I think there's like a Whiskey Psalm thing happening today. What's going yeah, on this, today? Yeah, uh, well, this week we've got Whiskey Psalm yeah. uh, 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And about half that group are going to be picking up bottles <laughs> yeah. here at Crowded Barrel. Don't, don't tell them that. That's uh, not I mean, good. totally yes. on their own volition. Right. Not a sponsored thing. Right. They bought it on their own time. So, in addition to the IRS thing, I thought about it. I was like, well, the only reason I started was to help promote and establish awareness for the Whiskey Song program. Right. Like, that was done. Yeah. Years ago. At this point, the Whiskey Song School has graduated hundreds of psalms. We're rolling. Right. So, it's rolling. So for me to keep doing that, it's not really helping anything. No. I mean, it's fun. It's a diversion and yeah. enjoyable. It's a nice break from the day. Yeah. Not ideal yeah. whenever I come back from a batch of shoots and I have a lot of things to get done. And yeah, yeah. Four yeah. whiskeys deep. Yeah. Plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not ideal. But it's, hey. it's good. You know what it is? It's, it's work-life balance. Yeah. Just, That's what it is. Yeah, let's go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then the final thing was, the vault has always been a very specific format. Yeah. And then you were explaining to me, it's like, I, I want to take this in a different direction. Yeah. And you wanted to take it a different direction than 
it's it's not the Whiskey Tribe review channel. Right. It's not the Magnificent Bastards, the Patron Saint, the Ceremonies. You want right. to do something different. Well, I wanted to separate it. It felt like it would be super pathetic to be all by myself in the vault going, you Magnificent Bastard. I want to start talking about the school and start talking about the stories and start showing that story is priority and you know what I mean? Yeah. So we're turning it into a storytelling type approach. There's already been a couple of episodes on the Whiskey Vault channel. Yeah. A lot of people think I'm fired. <laughs> like, There's well, definitely at least a couple of people who thought you were fired. Let's address this though, because the timing is profoundly suspicious. Okay. You departing from Tribe. Yeah. The shape of the Whiskey Vault channel is gonna be something different. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be there. The only thing that a reasonable person would think is, oh my God, what happened? Oh my God. IRS. So Daniel uh, is gonna be going into the Psalm School more deeply, into Wizard Academy more deeply. But frankly, from our end of things, it's, it's just opening up a lot of mental bandwidth to no longer can, you know, worry about how do I keep your seat warm? Yeah. How do I make sure that people aren't taking over your role? Or how um, do you balance these two things? Yeah, and how do I, you know, uh, bring other people in to take advantage of like the opportunities and the challenges that you haven't had the bandwidth to take care of? Yes, and Academy's at a crucial moment right now. Yeah. So it's got, it was a, uh, I'm doing everybody a disservice on both sides <laughs> if I don't pick which thing I'm gonna do. Right. Well, and <clears throat> you know, frankly, I would be uh, annoyed if the Academy wasn't, like it's my family's legacy. Yeah. Let's go mm -hmm. through the checklist. The channel, the mm -hmm. content, the community. Right. You have always been doing the background research on the Whiskey Vault. Right. I show up and you tell me about the bottles and I drink them. Right. On the Whiskey Tribe, it's the complete reverse. Yeah, I show up. I do all of the background work, the ideas for the episodes. Alex and I are producing it. Um, and then you show up and you just go along to the right on camera. And then you jump over back to Wizard Academy. Right. So on the content side of things, it's like we're probably gonna be seeing a bit less of you. Yeah. On the distillery side of things, the team that's been in there is doing uh, an amazing work. What's your yeah. read on their ability? Solid. No break. Yeah. No break. Uh, Kyle's palate is great. His cuts, flawless. Uh, Andrew is getting better and better in building patterns. Mm -hmm. He's got a natural instinct for it, which is really nice. Yeah. Talking and, about Andrew Pena? Yeah. yeah. And we're still going to be working together. Yeah. So I'm still, like, actually, three, four days ago, we sat and did some more sensory palate training. Mm -hmm. And they're incredible. So on the academy side of things, one of the things you mentioned is you were always handcuffed. Yeah, we can't talk about Crowded Barrel. I can't offer anybody seats in classes. If I'm working with staff, I have to be very careful where I am on the property. That's not true anymore. Because I can now function only as Chancellor of Wizard Academy. Yeah. And I support a lot of different people in the whiskey industry. You suggested that you know I start a whiskey review channel. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you know. Kind of so one, no, not that you have enough on your plate or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let Alex do it. What does he do? Alex, you don't do anything. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that idea of community donated bottles and yeah. people getting shout outs for their generosity. Right. Yeah, I would want to figure out well, what are the things that are the coolest about right. what, what the Whiskey Vault has always been? What are right. the things that we should definitely maintain? And then what are the things that are new that we should try and mm -hmm. experiment with? I, I, I would, would say farewell, but... I'll be right over there. I'm just gonna be right over there. It's like saying goodbye to somebody and then walking down the same hallway. And this is my read on it. You, you needed to go in on the Wizard Academy and leave this behind mm. so that you could full-throatedly and frequently advocate <laughs> on behalf of the Magnificent Bastards and Crowded Barrel. Without any legal... Right, with no, no legal yeah. handcuffs. Yeah, uh, sure. What? No, I didn't, that wasn't convincing at all. <laughs> that, that sounded like you didn't take me seriously right now. <laughs> that sounded like you, you think I'm joking. I was really racking my brains trying to figure out how do I replace Daniel's blending. Yeah, that's because, a thing. Because I think the biggest value that you've maintained in the distillery, your blending skills? Yeah. Well... That's, did you just become the mooch? <laughs> oh shit. We have to rewrite the whole story. Our blends are phenomenal. Yeah. We've done two magnificent beast blends, the Jackalope and the Hydra, exceptional blends. I think the first one won gold yeah. at BTI. Um, the Hydra, we're just now starting to put it out into the world. It's gonna do really, really well. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the blending, yeah. I have an idea. 
That's a good idea. Man, like who could we possibly bring onto the team that could, that could even begin, even begin to do that, that kind of work with us? Oh my God. Is that Irene Tan? That might be me. All right guys, so Irene Tan, the legend. We traveled across the country to visit your store in particular. We showed up, we had an amazing time. It was the largest episode on the channel for years. I know, until Churchill came along. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And that yeah. me, I was like, damn it. <laughs> Churchill <laughs> knocked you off the top. Not only do you have some deep roots in Whiskey Tribe, You've been around since the earliest days. Yes. You are also training in the song classes. Yes. Uh, what level are you training at right uh, now? I actually just uh, passed my level four in, uh, in April. You've done a, a hundred barrel picks in the last four years. Mm -hmm. In four years, that's just a little bit mind blowing, a little scary, but. Yeah. How many places have let you in to like pick and choose and sample and do your thing? Most of them have. The size of your store and the size of the distilleries that you like to work with, that you choose to work with, are far outsized. <laughs> by your reputation in the industry. I travel to meet people, network with people, just kind of see what they're all about, whether they're people I want to work with or not. Yeah. Uh, most of the stories I work with are smaller stories. To me, it's great because they're a lot more flexible. You know, there's, there's ways that we can do things that you can't do with a, you know, some big outfit out there. Then somebody else, you know, up on the bung, I don't really care about that. I will steal whatever's in there. Yeah. I got a power drill. That can happen too. <laughs> <laughs> so Talking with Irene at the end of the Bastards Ball that we had recently. It's like, Irene, there's one choke point that we keep coming to in Credit Barrel. We want to be doing really cool features of distilleries, like single barrels and sourcing, and like our independent bottling series, the, the Alliance mm -hmm. series. Yep. It's not a white label series, where we cover it up with our own stuff and try to obfuscate where the whiskey actually came from, which is way too common in our industry. Yep. It is a series where if somebody's doing amazing work, we want to feature them on the label and present them to the Magnificent Bastards, to the Whiskey Tribe, so they can more fully understand and appreciate the scope of talent that's out there that's not necessarily in a giant corporate brand. Yes. So you're out there, you're doing these barrel picks. <laughs> Maybe we officially bring you onto the crowd of barrel team to do barrel picks for us. Yeah. And then, since you're doing your own professional blends anyways. There was that. And the choosing of these single barrels, what if you're selecting barrels that you know will be an amazing blend? Yeah, that was, it's kind of wild. Yeah. The light bulb just kind of went off, I think, and yeah. I was like, okay. And the fact that we aren't limited to a state or a category, it's like, Beautiful the sky's the limit. Yeah, I know, I'm really excited. But the difference I see between you and other people who are also very talented, Irene has figured out you can't just sit on your hands and wait for these samples to show up. No, shit, man, you want it, you gotta go for it. So you gotta you got build it big or go home. You snuck me some samples of things that you've been working on. I was uh -huh. like, damn it, Irene. <laughs> this is Riona. Uh, batch one of King's Code, a combination of uh, American single malt and um, Irish single malt, which I don't think anybody has done. This is a beautiful blend. You're gonna be doing uh, barrel picks for your store that yep. you're still gonna be mm -hmm. doing. Yes. But also, while you're in there, you're looking out for amazing barrels, for Crowded Barrel yes. to acquire. Yes. And in addition to the Alliance series releases, you knowing in the back of your head, if there's something that I find in this barrel house, it would be in like Australia that you're about to go to, mm -hmm. you were in Finland recently. Yes. If there are barrels that could be phenomenal in a blend, first and foremost, make the quality. Yes. So yeah, you don't need to chase those unicorns. You just make your own. Th I like that. Cheers, Cheers to that. Hell yeah. I think the title that we gave you isn't like a blender or sourcing agent, you are our spirit hunter. I like that. Yes. And I, I, I need a bow, don't need an arrow. I think my my, my, uh, my arrow is gonna be a, a whiskey thief. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this for you. Yeah. Immediately. Give yes. me 20 minutes. You think I'm kidding. I don't chase unicorns. I make them. <laughs> we just had a big giant upgrade in the ability for us to find amazing whiskeys and then bring them through Crowded Barrel. Sometimes it'll be relatively low bottle count, other times it'll be yeah. something that scales, which would be very exciting because that's how you build things like castles. Castles? Castles. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so we're already getting right into it. These are samples from Finland. Yes, that they You've been taught, what is it about this distillery in Finland that you're really excited about? What excited me about Finland was, um, Thank you. 
<laughs> All right, this is gonna be good. And I'm about to be talking about how we can scale our own stuff because you wore the perfect t-shirt. Another gloriously humble human being that we're actually working with to scale up Crowded Barrel. You wore their t-shirt, Andalusia. Love them. Let's go over there. All right, it is super early. I'm outside. Andalusia Whiskey Company. Driving over here with a truck bed full of whiskey barrels, mouth full of black coffee, and a ear full of Tyler Childers. Doesn't get more country than that. There it is. Good morning. You get Kyle in here, I get a little nervous because he sees that little kitchen area and a bathroom. He's getting spoiled now. <laughs> we don't have that. We didn't have that until the expansion, man. Before that, it was cooking on the uh, tool bench and stuff. And eating uh, tortillas up on the still and things like that, you know, yeah. <laughs> really fashion, man. I can see how that gets old pretty quick. Dusty tortillas that taste like pennies. <laughs> <laughs> Not the yeah. best. They're warm, though. <laughs> so what do you do whenever your crowdsourced distillery is one of the best granny glass single malt in Texas and it's a small distillery? You do not have the equipment, the manpower to scale up to meet demand, at least right now. You reach out to a friend who was named by Whiskey Advocate Magazine as one of the top 20 whiskey distilleries on planet Earth. Good morning. Good morning, what's up brother? How, How you doing? doing? Andalusia has new stuff, let's check it out. New fermenters that are double sized. Before we begin, yeah, yeah. just immediately, it's two emotions simultaneously. Huh? Awe mixed with jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is awesome. Thank you. It's Come on. Yeah. All right, so what size are we talking here? A thousand gallon stripping still from Vendo. Why am I here? What are you guys gonna be doing with Crowded Barrel? Uh, we're gonna make a little single mom. You're gonna take our single mom and make it here? Why would you do such a thing? That's ridiculous. <laughs> there, there was a little bit of soul of single mom, you know, that was born here originally. That's right, right that's know, the right. Smoking of the malt, and you know, we dated once before. You know. <laughs> so at Crowded Barrel, one of the biggest things that we're doing is whiskey quests with the Magnificent Bastards and our Patreon, and that is where we go through a series of votes to collectively make decisions in the designing of a whiskey. That's great, but if you're always doing something new, you never have enough traction or momentum on a winner to scale. You're just constantly moving on to the next experiment. But if we think of our distillery as an R&D department for whiskey. The whiskeys that you guys are designing, once those are just nice and beautiful and perfect, we're gonna reach out to some badass distilleries like Andalusia. And that is how we can scale Crowd of Barrel products. Like in the world where a hose costs freaking $1,200. Yeah, yeah. It's incredibly expensive to run a distillery. So to piggyback off the production pipeline of very, very talented distillers that we're collaborating with. We're super excited about it. It's kind of like um, like a ghost kitchen. Have you heard of this? Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's like a ghost distillery model. You've got kind of a sleepy time during the distillery and you can slip in and take over. And today we're gonna be brewing single mom in our mash tun. Right over here. So about a week from today, what is in the mash tun will be done fermenting. It'll it'll go into the fermenter after we after we brew today. And then it'll be there for a week fermenting. And then it'll go into the stripping still. And the very next day, it'll go into the finishing still. Awesome. So we'll have finished Single Mom next Thursday. We want to kick off this epic collaboration with Andalusia. They're upgrading our Whiskey Quest pipeline with a single barrel pick by Ty Phelps. It's a super unique barrel. Link in the description down below. Dude. You want to check out our smoke malt. It's got peated with the copper bun, Irish turf peat. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. So what we're looking at right now is effectively an expansion of Proud of Barrels whiskey production pipeline. We're already working with another company. I'm not gonna get too much into those details just yet, but this ghost distillery model where we're reaching out to amazingly talented distilleries that are making fantastic quality whiskey, saying, hey, here's the specs for the Whiskey Quest, the community designed whiskey, for example, the single mom. Take, for our specifications, this spirit, make it on your equipment, and then send us the results so we can age it in Texas. So one of the things I'm most looking forward to is whenever distilleries around the country, around the world, get our exact specifications to make our whiskey, how is it different on their equipment? And we can get variants of things like Single Mom and the upcoming Whiskey Quest that we're in the middle of right now. And Moose, what can you tell us about this still that you're using for the Spirit Run? This one really, we take the low wines from the stripping still, we move it into here, we run it ultra slow, we make our cuts on it, so we go through and everything's sensory, so uh, by taste and smell and sometimes a little bit of feeling, 
when everything is up and running full steam ahead, uh, both of these stills will be running and putting out about three, three and a half barrels a day. Right now we're probably maybe a quarter or a third of our production capabilities and it feels like I'm making mountains of spirit. That's oh, awesome, man. man. It's insane. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this episode. NordVPN, if you don't know by now, it's pretty straightforward. If you haven't used it before, it's also very, very simple. NordVPN is basically a gateway for you to connect to the internet in a very secure way. But through this gateway, you can connect to the internet with servers strategically located in countries all over planet Earth. Now, why is that a good thing? Why would you want your internet connection to go through different servers around the planet? For me, the coolest thing is getting access to content that you don't have access to in your country, it's region locked. But if you connect to Ireland, for example, then you can see that, oh wow, there's really cool things on Netflix there that I can't get here. Also, the added level of security that comes with a robust VPN is very nice. Anybody that's ever dealt with security issues, you ever get a message saying that somebody's trying to access your account, wanting to make sure that it's yours, that's a little unnerving, especially if you've gone through identity theft, like me and my family did a few years back before we were using VPNs in cybersecurity. It is a giant hot mess, and little things like VPNs and secure passwords that you're not repurposing across multiple websites. Wow. Super affordable, very easy to use. You can use it across multiple devices and NordVPN is risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. So you can try it out, make sure it's right for you. you go to nordvpn.com slash whiskey tribe. You're gonna get an exclusive deal four months for free whenever you use our code. It's nordvpn.com slash whiskey tribe. I'm super excited about working with you guys to expand the, the whiskey quest is to have you guys involved in a ghost distillery model and basically piggybacking off of this amazing equipment upgrade. I'm pumped because I'm, I love the model that you guys do of kind of sourcing ideas from you know your folks. And so I, I'm gonna really think it's gonna be fun to kind of get new fresh ideas from this enormous crowd of people and uh, get to you know make things at their direction. So that's pretty exciting. Awesome. Dude, thank you so much. Looking forward to it. Cheers, bro. Ty is absolutely right. You guys, your collective input, together we have more knowledge and experience than any single human being on the face of the earth when it comes to whiskey. One of the things I've been trying to figure out is how to best leverage that collective knowledge. And during the Bastards Ball, I brought this idea to the community. I was like, guys, what if we had an elected council of magnificent bastards that periodically you guys choose, you put people in place specifically for their knowledge and expertise. And somebody in there said, well, you know what? We're gonna call it the round table. Hell yeah, round tables are friggin' awesome. So we're gonna talk about the elections, how we're gonna pull those off, how we're going to identify the specific skill sets we need in the upcoming whiskey quests, and the schedule to do that in Patreon this coming week. Let's do it during the standard weekly Patreon q &A. Having options and the ability to pivot and strategies we have that handled but none of those things come together if you don't have the right mindset there's a specific issue i've been struggling with in regards to mindset for a long time one of the things that i have struggled with you know probably in the last few years now it it comes down to this twisted little inside joke that's only been in my head and i've never really shared with anybody else a dad joke you know what? <laughs> this is over. <laughs> In my head is like, should we change the name from the Crowd of Barrel Whiskey Company to the Stepping Stone Whiskey Company? <laughs> I have realized I've become very gun shy about who on the team uh, do I want to bring into the content put on the channel. Yeah. Because the viewer, you guys, you develop these this familiarity, these yeah. relationships. You get to know them. You get to know them. And whenever somebody goes off to a better opportunity, well, like, I, I, I was having this conversation like 50 feet that way, the night of Bastard's Ball, with a whole bunch of MBs, we're hanging out in the parking lot. We're just talking about the, kind of the shape of the future and everything, and they're saying, man, there's been like a few people that are just, you know, we really miss them. Like there's you know, Emma, yeah. Fancy Dan. They said, look man, like the fact that you're a stepping stone for a lot of talent. That's a strength, not a weakness. That's what they said. But for me, I'm not thinking of it from that, that perspective. I'm thinking of it from the audience's perspective because what they see mm -hmm. is just people departing. Coming and going, coming and going. Yeah. One of the things that they recognized, which I didn't think anybody recognized, was Crowded Barrel 
you guys give a shot to people who aren't already super experienced. Like you can recognize that raw talent. You can recognize somebody who has what it takes, but how many of you have, you know, wanted to get your foot in the door in the industry, but you have to have X number of years of experience, or you have to have this, yeah. you know, series of formal References training. And, um, and we bring people in that we know their work ethic, we know their personality, we know, you know, the, the skills, the talent that can be shaped and developed. We bring them in, it gets developed, and then they, like a stepping stone, move on to the next thing. So from their perspective, it's like, that's amazing because nobody else is giving people that kind of shot. Yeah. From my perspective, it's you guys keep seeing people leave and we don't get into the real details why. Yeah. But it there's... often comes down to it's bigger, more established opportunity and more money. Or more focused on what they want to do because at a place this small, you have to wear like 10 hats. Yeah. Because at this point, our team, absolute killers, like people are amazing at their job. They're making huge strides in areas that we've been, frankly, treading water for years. And for months and months and months, I haven't wanted to show off. No, yeah, I have not wanted that. to show off these people because it's like fucking hell. Like, you know, there, you can only have so many people depart before it looks like, you know, there's something wrong. But no other distilleries have cameras floating around showing all the people. Right. Yeah. And that's not. Look, that's not a struggle, but I'm coming from a different perspective. The easiest thing is everybody who works anywhere, especially these days, is always going to leave at some point. That's every company, period. The question is, are you a part of launching or are you always left behind? I think, Crowded Barrel is always launched. I think I need uh, permission from the audience to show off these people because whenever you're on a channel like this, you're basically getting a, a highlight reel. The person that is featured demonstrating their personality and their likability and their talent and their mm -hmm. skill set, they will get opportunities. And sometimes those opportunities are something that we can't match, like either dollar amounts or they want to travel a lot or they only want to do one specific thing and we need them to do half a dozen other things. I basically need you guys to be okay with that whenever somebody gets an amazing opportunity dangled in front of them. There's nothing wrong with them chasing that opportunity. They didn't abandon us. They did what basically everybody would do if you had another opportunity for advancement in your career. Yeah. Is that fair? That should be. That's healthy. Come full circle. We're going to destroy something to make room for something bigger and better. Mm. Ready? So once again, we have outgrown the space in our distillery to keep doing that, which is kind of great, but also really annoying. I truly can't wait for the next phase of everything that we're working on and the content, the plans we have with the community. It's, this would have been like an hour and a half long video if I went through all the details of the stuff that we're building for you guys. That's not, that's not what you want to hear. Holy hell. Ah, yeah. I struggled with putting this episode together for a long time. And I think I wanted to have a nice, tidy, neatly packaged resolution. And eventually I realized that resolutions only come at the end of a story. As far as I'm concerned, this isn't the end. This is the middle. This is act two. It's, it's a shock to the status quo and we've got miles to go before we sleep. But also recognizing the fact that I'm not really the one that gets to decide whether this is the end. That's you. And I think it all comes down to one simple question. Are you with us? Thank you for bringing us this far. Right now, in this moment, I think we just need to thank Daniel for the time that he was with us. In the comments, if you want to wish him luck, bid him farewell, I know he will absolutely love that.
Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, 